Okay, so battery, battery life, battery health. This is a notoriously controversial topic and a ton of people have varying opinions about it, but I'm not gonna try to change anyone's minds. You read the title. This is what I want you to take from this video. What happens if you limit your phone battery charging to around 80% for almost two years? What's the battery health after that period of time? And you know, what did I do different to make sure my phone has sort of aged as gracefully as possible? And you know, just should you care? Is your life busier or do you really benefit from delaying uh, the inevitable? Because yes, batteries are an aging part and they will need to be replaced. What I'm going to try to avoid is giving you pointers that uh, just give more anxiety than they help because at the end of the day, there's nothing you can do to your battery so that it will remain as healthy as it was on day one after five years of using your device. Okay, for starters, why 80%? This is the general idea for lithium ion batteries and this tr is transversal. This happens with cars, this happens with phones, this happens with pretty much any modern battery in any device. You want to ideally avoid deep discharges and deep recharges. So you want to avoid going above, let's say 80-ish percent, and you want to avoid going under 20-ish percent. Now, to do this, you either have to limit the charging or be on the charger more often. And the idea is, if you imagine a battery like a rubber band that's being pulled and the fully charged battery is a fully extended rubber band. There's a load of tension there and the more the battery discharges, the less tension, the less voltages on the battery and the happier the battery is going to be overall. Most modern devices, the batteries are made to last around 500 cycles. Some of the most recent ones can go up to 1000 and 1500 battery cycles. That means the phone battery can be charge from zero to 100% a thousand times until the battery health is under 80% of the original charge. So just as an easy pointer math, if your phone has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery on day one, after a thousand battery cycles from zero to 100%, it will only be able to retain 4,000 milliamp hours of charge. Now, the manufacturers can handle this lower capacity in a multitude of different ways. Ideally, you wouldn't notice the difference and you just have less charge, but batteries are a complex thing and sometimes your phone just might die when there's still 20% battery left. Or the manufacturer, like for example, Apple does this, they slow down the phones, the lower the battery health is under 80%. And that has all sorts of controversies. But uh, the idea is you want to stay above 80% health to have a good experience with your particular device. Now for this video, and I know, I know it's an iPhone and an Apple Watch Ultra. But to be honest, these are the two devices devices that I've kept on me consistently for the past since they came out. So 21-ish months since they were first used, and these are the battery stats as of today. Battery health is at 91% with 461 battery cycles out of the 1,000 that Apple quotes as the life of the charge of this battery cell. And on the watch is at 97%. But I can't really precise how many charge cycles the device did because Apple just doesn't give you that sort of information for the watch in this case. As for my charging routine, this is how it pretty much went down. I always wireless charged or most of the time I wireless charged in a MagSafe dock on both my desk and my bedside table. This is my default way of doing things and it's not ideal because of the extra heat and the faster charging compared to let's say an ideal scenario which would be a wire charge with a five watt brick. So as slow as you can, as smoothly as you can, that would probably still give you some benefit, but that's not how I handle this. I also charged as often as possible. Like if I'm on my desk, the phone will most likely be on the dock. If I'm on my bed, the phone will most likely be on the dock. 
And above all that, what I did is I live abroad and I usually video call for long periods of time with family. And on those long calls, it is often that I would just go and grab a power bank and just plug my phone into that because the battery will just run out throughout the call. So why not just plug in straight away and avoid the extra battery cycle? Because yes, using your phone and charging it at the same time produces heat. Heats are bad for batteries, so avoid doing that. But at the same time, the worst thing you can do for a battery is to use it. Spoiler alert. So the most cycles you can minimize, that's the approach you should go for from my experience. Um, another thing that you can do on some Android devices, let's say the um, Samsung S24 and newer, that works on this. Um, the Pixel it's finicky. I'm not sure it works on this. This is Pixel 8, 8 or newer. You might be able to get something, uh, but not 100% sure. And the ROG phones and other gaming phones, most likely they will be able to support this feature. And that's USB pass-through charging. The way this is usually implemented, and that's the way with the Samsung and the ROG phone, is it's both a gaming feature. So with Game Booster and with Game Genie, when you're in game, and you plug in a charger, you can get an option on the menu that gives you access to USB pass-through, which pretty much does what it says on the tin. It will not charge the battery, just use the power from the wall as you play your game. So ideally, less heat, less drain on the battery, and the feature should work pretty much seamlessly. Now, there are other things that you do on these devices that's quite high demand for energy. Let's say GPS when you're on the road and you're GPSing on your car or video calling. You can't really use these sorts of things without doing some quite advanced trickery to confuse the game modes to trigger on these specific apps. So that's maybe something that manufacturers could just add to these devices, but because we've all been in a car with a GPS tracking on a phone and um, it's just so hot and it's not even charging, it's not even doing anything. So having the ability to stop the charging and use the power straight from whatever charger we have on our car, that would be ideal and that would further improve this situation. Now to wrap it all off, I want to take this opportunity to address some of the most common things you hear people say about babying batteries and taking care of batteries. Like, I don't think you should worry too much. This video is not supposed to drive your anxiety up as you're trying to micromanage all these things. Find a system that works for you, whether that being limiting the battery charging on the device and just not thinking about it anymore, or just charge it all the way, use it all the way, drain it all the way, do whatever works for your life. That's the most important thing about this entire thing. And that's why I really think getting a good device with a good battery life on day one, that's the key. Like the reason and the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is able to stay with 97% and my phone is at 93, even though both of them are used to around the same extent, is because the battery life on the watch is just so much better. I can much easily keep it within that 80 to 20 window and just charge it before I go to bed for a little bit of time and that's good to go. I keep my phone at 80%, but most days I'll use more than 80% battery and that's just completely normal. As for the concerns for wireless charging and trickle charging your phones, I think some of them are just a little overblown. Like they are true, there's truth to minimizing heat and there's truth to minimizing how aggressive of a charge you get on your device by using slow chargers. But at the end of the day, with how I planned this experiment, I think the results are in line to reach that four year mark with the device needing a new battery. And I think that's a great target for most people with just minimal fuss and just a little bit of care. Because yes, you really still have to care a little bit to give this whole thing a try because at the end of the day, you know, it's a battery, it's gonna die and, um, and you should be okay with that. That's pretty much it. I hope this video was useful to you and um, I hope you can extend the life of the batteries on all devices in your life. Okay, see you very soon, bye.